Hi, my name is Mike Innes. I've been a professional tromboneist for 40 years. Today we're going to talk about mutes, as you can see. First of all, as any tromboneist, whether you are a semi-professional, a professional or an amateur, you will need four mutes. You must show up at a rehearsal or a gig or a concert with four mutes. The four essentials are the cup mute, the plunger, the bucket and the straight mute. The most uh, well used mute is the cup and this is the Humesenberg familiar red and white in appearance mute. If you have to just take one mute with you on a gig because you were, you were traveling somewhere where you couldn't really take much stuff with you, I think it would be this. The next most used common mute is the straight mute. This one is a metal, fairly heavy Humesenberg, and uh, it makes quite a, a piercing kind of sound compared to the, the cup, which is a little more mellow. It doesn't matter what style of music you play, whether it's brass band, swing, jazz, orchestral, you need one of these in your bag. <laughs> One of the other mutes you should always have with you is the bucket. Once again, Humesenberg, red and white, although there are, are many other makes. This one I've had for years. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of pretty old looking. They still make one exactly the, the same as this, and it makes a very mellow sound. Used more in jazz than any other sort of music, I would say. In my opinion, the fourth essential mute that you need is the plunger. Uh, ideally, you need one that is made of soft rubber material, such as this Humesenberg, once again, or a straightforward old-fashioned plumber's plunger. They're equally as good. There is also a different one, which is the Glenn Miller Humesenberg. This is my really ancient one. They still make this not used as much as the soft ones, this one and this one. If you're a serious trombonist, whether semi-professional, amateur or professional, you do need one of these. In fact, there are several other mutes that you do need to own, but not necessarily to take on every, every gig with you. This is called the solo tone, otherwise known as megatone or clear tone. It's a fairly old-fashioned sound. It, it was used in the 30s and the 40s. Uh, it's meant to replicate in some ways the human voice, and, and I think it does. Here I have the Wick uh, version of the Humes and Berg cup mute. This is made of, of aluminium and it's adjustable. In fact, it does, it, it comes apart and can be used as a straight mute, as you can see. I won't actually put it all the way off there, but you can use that as a cup or a straight. And it has a slightly different sound and it's a very versatile mute. Another mute you should own 
is the Harman mute, otherwise known as the TIN mute, the ET, or the Wawa mute. It can be used as it is with this extending separate tube all the way in, like that, or it, it can be used halfway out, or I prefer really if, if, if the tube is out completely and used without the tube. There is also a lighter Joe Rowell Harman. It's a bit more user friendly to be honest because it's smaller but does a similar job to the already mentioned heavier Hugenberg one. If you really want to own every mute, it's, it's a good idea to have one of these. It's the Derby. It's fairly obvious because there is a, a Derby hat, and that's it's a, it's a hat, isn't it? And that's obviously how it all started off in the old days, probably in the 20s. You would see a whole section of trombones, and they would have these very often fixed on the stand. So the music stand is there in front of you and this would be, be on a stand and you could play into it. You may not think you need one, but everyone else will absolutely assure you that you do. And that is a practice mute. It cuts down the external sound, obviously, for others, um, so you could use it in a flat or in your room or, or wherever. Or at the side of the stage or something, you know, on a concert, and not really be heard much. They do various makes, there, there are, are certain ones on the market and it may be that you want a certain style or size or sound. This is a Don Maslit, which is quite a big seller. It's fairly small and it sticks out from the bell by about maybe two or three inches. This is the Dennis Wick, which is the largest one, which is basically one of his straight mutes but with a different cork and some holes at the side. That's actually quite large and I think I like the sound of this to be honest and the, the response. There's a very small one, which is a Wallace, which is a very nice looking thing and fits flush into the bell, which is very useful because you could put the instrument away in a hard, hard case and you can still have the mute in the bell. You can't do that with the other, other two. They all make a similar sound. The intonation is slightly suspect, but that's the same with all of these practice mutes, really. But they are very useful. They can help to keep your, your chops in and not disturbing it. 